A new jailbreak was kind of sort of updated to include support for iOS 17. Apple issued a new iteration of iOS 17 to the public, being 17.1.1. iOS 17.2 looms on the horizon. We're going to discuss everything you need to know related to the current kind of sad state of things where jailbreaking is concerned and so much more. Kicking things off, we're gonna talk about iOS 17 and the jailbreak that was kinda of, sorta of updated to include support. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN, the only VPN you will ever need. You're probably all familiar with VPNs at this point, but if you're not, here are a couple of use cases. They help to secure insecure networks so you can do things like banking and logging into sites with sensitive information with peace of mind like never before. You can safely do your banking banking or trading from a coffee shop or hotel's public Wi-Fi without having to worry about a bad actor intercepting your data and compromising your accounts. Beyond security though, VPNs open an exciting new world for entertainment. They let you access content on streaming services like Netflix that are locked to specific countries. You can even get rid of those pesky pop-ups that bother you to enable cookies. The use cases are almost endless and there's a no-risk 30-day money-back guarantee when you sign up. And for those of you who act fast, you'll get an exclusive Black Friday deal of up to six extra months for free when you sign up with my link at surfshark.com forward slash ICU. It's the first link in the description. So can you jailbreak iOS 17 on your device right now? No, probably not, unfortunately. But Pale Rain was updated to include support for iOS 17. And what they really mean by that is iPadOS 17. Because Pale Rain utilizes the Checkmate exploit, which included support for devices powered by A8 CPUs all the way up to A11, and the only A11 devices that are still supported in iOS 17 are technically a couple of iPads. So again, hence iPadOS 17. But the developers did update it, so technically, in theory, you could jailbreak up to iOS 17.1, and they say possibly even beyond that. But basically, again, like I mentioned, it utilizes the Checkmate exploit of old, which was a hardware-based vulnerability that Apple simply could not patch because it has led to years of being able to jailbreak the latest versions of iOS because, again, non-patchable. It was the last true hardware exploit that we've had for Apple's devices. Unfortunately, the last iPhone to be jailbreakable by Checkmate was the iPhone 10, which is no longer supported in iOS 7. But for those of you who are adventurous and do have an iPad that's supported, I will have a link for that down below in the description. So be sure to check there. And if you do happen to do it, definitely report your findings because I would be very curious. Now, next, let's move on to something that's kind of bittersweet, I suppose. So Linus Hens, the researcher responsible for the Fugu jailbreaks and the key exploit used in Dopamine, the last true jailbreak that we received, was hired by Apple. So that's very, very unfortunate to say the least, because it means that we likely will not get a jailbreak for pre iOS 17. In fact, we could have seen a jailbreak for iOS 16.6.1 and below. But seeing as he's now hired by Apple, I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. Back to dopamine quickly, let's touch on that. Like I mentioned, that was the last jailbreak that we received that isn't counting something like Pale Rain powered by Checkmate. It didn't include support for the latest device at the time being the iPhone 14, but it did include up to the iPhone 13. So from A12 up to A15 and M1 iPad models. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, there was the slight possibility of seeing that iOS 16 to 16.6.1 jailbreak for A12 and newer devices, but that likelihood is definitely shrinking now, seeing his new employment. And speaking of, in fact, in iOS 17.1, there was a security vulnerability closed, a kernel vulnerability actually, that could theoretically be exploitable and aid in the creation of a jailbreak. A lot of work would have to be done by other researchers though at this point, but essentially iOS 17.1 did close a key kernel vulnerability. So if you want to be able to ensure your chance of maybe being able to jailbreak iOS 
as 17, then definitely stay below 17.1. It's always best policy to stay as low as possible. And if you already updated past 16.6.1, just again, stay where you are at. Because we didn't get a jailbreak for iOS 16 this time around, but we could still retroactively maybe receive one for, like I said, up to 16.6.1. That likelihood, again though, pretty small at this point. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Earlier, Apple did release 17.1.1 this week as well. You might be wondering, what did it bring to the table? I'll tell you, not much at all. Basically, it just fixed that bug with BMWs and the newest iPhone, which sounds really weird. But essentially, the update includes a fix for iPhone 15 models that, quote, in rare circumstances, Apple Pay and NFC features may become unavailable on iPhone 15 models after wirelessly charging in certain cars. And then they also fixed a bug where, quote, weather lock screen widget may not correctly display snow. So that's 17.1.1. But what about what's coming next? What about iOS 17.2? Well, it's coming and it will hopefully have that journal app Apple promised back at WWDC that is slated to be included in the final release. It will have a translate option for the action button on iPhone 15 Pro models. There will be new widgets. Apple Music will now have collaborative playlists and a listening history focus filter. iMessage will get contact key verification as well as sticker reactions via the tap back menu, Memoji will get new customization options, and there will be rainbow text for contact posters. So guys, that's pretty much all I really wanted to talk about today. The last thing that I might want to mention though is that Apple was supposed to include sideloading in iOS 17. They've been really coy with that though. Now for those of you who don't know, sideloading is basically bypassing Apple's official app store to install something else onto an iPhone or iPad. You've been able to do it for a while now, but there have been certain restrictions in place, such as the fact that you need a developer account, whether it's free or paid, and any application that you self-sign will need to be re-signed every week. But the European Union is putting the squeeze on Apple, pressuring them to decouple their devices from the App Store and release their grasp on the devices and what can actually be installed on them. Now, the mandate is set to essentially go into effect March in 2024, and we'll see what happens. It could be included in iOS 17.2 or 17.3, and it may be restricted to certain countries, but I don't know, maybe, just maybe, it could lend to possibly seeing a new jailbreak in the future. I don't know how, because of course we would still need key vulnerabilities to be exploited by security researchers and a lot of work to be done. But if it makes it even the slightest bit easier for those security researchers and developers, then that is fantastic news. And also maybe we could install and see some really cool other things onto our devices. Definitely not like in the order of tweaks or anything that would actually require root access, but it could, it could liven things up. We'll see. I'll keep you guys updated as that that situation progresses. Again, I'm excited for the future regardless, because like I said, maybe that opens up some interesting new possibilities. Not exactly jailbreaking per se, but interesting nevertheless. So I hope you guys liked today's video. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section where jailbreaking is headed, whether you even still want to jailbreak anymore and why. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.